I'm your representative, and I want to thank uh, everybody for uh, coming here today. This seems like a, uh, a larger crowd than I expected. Are we? Is how many people are here from Green? All right. Well, thank you very much for for coming. I appreciate it. This has been uh, uh, my seventh month serving as your uh, representative. We've obviously had a, a very interesting uh, six to seven months in Congress so far. Uh, we first started our tenure back in January trying to address uh, the debt and deficit issue. Uh, after I got uh, assigned my committees, which are the Budget Committee, the um, Government and Oversight Reform Committee, as well as uh, the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, uh, we kind of went to work both on the committee side and, and uh, the legislative side, putting together, uh, I think, an agenda that tries to address the short and long-term fiscal challenges that we are having uh, as, a, as a nation. So it has uh, certainly been a challenge because we've got different perspectives and different views uh, within the House, the Senate, and the White House on how to solve the challenges that we all face. But I think uh, the one thing we all share is uh, the hope and a willingness that we can solve the uh, tremendous and important challenges ahead of us. So in the first six months, we uh, started out uh, by making sure that we started cutting spending in our own budgets uh, for members of Congress. We then started uh, getting engaged in the continuing resolution uh, debate. We hadn't had a budget that was passed, so we needed to address uh, what would the spending structure was going to look like for the remainder of the fiscal year. Uh, we had a, a dialogue and debate about that. We were reducing some spending uh, in some certain areas on the discretionary side. Couldn't necessarily come to any uh, long-term agreement on uh, the other side of the, of the ledger, which is the mandatory or anything codified in law, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, Social Security, and unemployment compensation. Uh, we moved into uh, the budget process where uh, we spent uh, the better part of two months crafting a budget, put a budget together, got it passed, which really I think reforms a lot of uh, the spending that we have uh, incurred over the last several years uh, in trying to address uh, a long-term fiscal outlook of uh, getting back uh, our budget to balance uh, over a period of years. Uh, that did pass the House. It is now <laughs> over awaiting action in the Senate. Uh, and then that brought us into uh, what we had most recently is the uh, debt ceiling debate and discussion. And while I heard from so many people already in New Hampshire, that uh, there has been a lot of frustration about the process. Uh, I think what ultimately, there were some good things that came out of it. 
Uh, I've heard from people on both sides of the aisle who uh, uh, I'm glad to hear from people in New Hampshire uh, during the course of the debate uh, through the telephone town halls that we had, uh, through the, the calls that we received and emails, uh, and then of course when the President asked everybody to let us know as members of Congress what you thought, I got to tell you you did, and that was helpful because we got a lot of insight from uh, that information. We had uh, about three, four hundred phone calls, we had uh, I think over just over a thousand emails uh, into the office. and. Uh, from all parts uh, of, of the district. And that was helpful and it was very useful. And I appreciated having that opportunity to hear from everybody. Uh, so that being said, I, I think there was great uh, concern and frustration about the process. I would share uh, with you in that frustration. Uh, I don't think we ever should be getting to this point. I would like to see a uh, much more responsible way of doing things in Washington uh, rather than the partisanship that we have seen and experienced. I prefer to see uh, your members uh, across the country trying to put the partisan politics aside and try to focus more on how we can uh, achieve some results for the country. Uh, that being said, uh, we ultimately came to a, a structure of an agreement that raises the debt ceiling but reduces spending by uh, cutting it in the first year and in the next nine years, capping spending, uh, and then uh, requiring uh, what is going to be a vote later this fall in the House and the Senate on a balanced budget amendment. I can't tell you yet whether that will pass the House or the Senate. Uh, they're still working on language uh, for that vote, but I expect that that will be happening sometime uh, in the early fall. And then the second phase of the agreement requires uh, a joint committee, six members of the House, six members of the Congress of the Senate to get together. Um, six Democrats, six Republicans, and try to come to some sort of agreement on the next phase of spending reductions uh, that uh, are going to be required in order to raise the debt ceiling. Obviously, if that doesn't occur uh, with an up or down vote in the House and the Senate, uh, then there is, through a process called sequestration, uh, automatic spending reductions uh, to the tune of about 1.4 to 1.5 trillion, uh, which is about 100% uh, of the level that uh, the president needs to uh, increase the debt ceiling. So that's where we are now. We got back uh, from the session about a couple of weeks ago. I've been spending most of my time in the last two, two and a half weeks uh, holding town halls, holding district discussions uh, with many people to make sure that uh, we have an update, that I can get you an update as, as effectively as I can on uh, what's occurred and what's transpired over the last six or seven months. Um, and then it, it's an opportunity for me to hear from you what you'd like me to focus on in the next six months. Uh, I think that it's uh, probably the most important thing for us to be focusing on is job creation, you know, moving this economy in the right direction. Uh, it's unfortunate that we remain at 9.1% unemployment. We've had uh, 28 months now of unemployment at 8% or higher. And that's very challenging and difficult for many New Hampshire families and families across the country. One of the things that I've done here back in district is uh, I held two uh, job fairs, one in Derry, one in Rochester, where we had, uh, I think, close to 40 at each uh, employers, and prospective employers, who were interested in hiring. Uh, we had several hundred people between the two of them come and attend. And it was great to see at least an opportunity to try to help people find a job if they're unemployed or underemployed. And I've got to say, I, I heard uh, lots of uh, tough stories from people who have been out of work for a long extended period of time. Uh, lots of heartbreaking stories from husbands and wives about how they've had to try to address their needs of their family, uh, their kids, whether their kids are in college and trying to figure out how to pay for that or uh, still trying to figure out how to save for college if their kids were a little younger. So the message that I've continued to hear is uh, let's kind of identify in the results, focus uh, on results, make sure that we get people uh, working as effectively together as they possibly can in Washington and try to move this economy forward. Uh, so I'm going to be here back in New Hampshire uh, for another uh, couple of weeks. We return on September 7th, uh, if not sooner. In case we get called back to do additional work. 
Uh, but I'm optimistic that uh, this fall we will continue to focus on the priorities of job creation, making sure that we have an opportunity to, to work on both sides of the aisle to try to get some of the things addressed that the country would like to see. Uh, and let's see if we can, in a, in a shorter amount of time than what's occurred over the last couple of years, uh, get this economy moving in the right direction. So that uh, being said, I'm happy to open it up to questions and comments. Um, and uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, the gentleman behind you. Hi. This hand went up first, and I'll be. You have a uh, the opportunity to break the log jam, the partisan log jam. You signed the pledge, but wrote a note this. But you also took a note to office. Which one takes precedence? Because they're incompatible. Well, my uh, my duty and responsibility is to my oath of office. That's correct. Uh, you know, I have a, a personal belief that the way we can grow revenue in, uh, in this challenging economy is to, to grow the economy. Look, we have 15 million people who are out of work. Right, they need I, 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 my, my responsibility and my focus is going to be trying to get those people back to work. That in and of itself would uh, grow revenues. Uh, I think that we've got to change the tax code. I think we've got to make it fairer. Uh, I think we need to change the rates. I think we need to broaden the base. I think we need to focus on eliminating uh, some of the loopholes that on the corporate side that uh, are not fair, that treat one corporation different than another. But I think most people in New Hampshire and most people in the country uh, are asking Congress in a bipartisan way to do that. And I think that makes sense. I think most people want to see fairness and equity. Uh, I mean, that, that's an important value that I think we all share. So in the budget process, we did insert that a requirement into the budget that passed the House. Now that's not the only mechanism that we can use to try to reform the tax code. We have uh, in Ways and Means uh, Committee on the House side right now, uh, the committee is working on what I hope is going to be a reform package that comes out this fall. Uh, and the latest information that I have from the chairman is that there is going to be a bipartisan agreement out of that committee that comes to the full House. And my hope and my expectation is that we have a bipartisan vote uh, out of the House and get it to the Senate. But that, there's nothing in there for revenues. Well, it, it, uh, it, it's, at, well uh, it, it's not in terms of raising tax rates, but in terms of increasing revenue, I believe that there would be an increase in revenue by closing some of the loopholes. But, it, but I want to be clear, but it doesn't, the proposal that's coming forward uh, is, at least from that committee, is not raising tax rates, but it is going to try to increase revenue through other mechanisms. Yes, sir. The Annie e. Casey Foundation uh, reported today that there were 50 million children living in poverty in the United States, uh, up to 18 percent uh, from about 10 years ago. The reason they're in poverty is because so many lost jobs. What do you propose to increase jobs in the immediate future? Re reform in the tax code needs to be done, but that's going to take years. We 